uh, from there, and that's that might be where I grew up. So, in other words, you're one of our own then, Barry? I am. <laughs> Brilliant. Debbie? Right. So, I grew up on the opposite side of the town. I grew up in East Belfast, um, on Hollywood Road. So, yeah, so we grew up there. Mum and Dad brought, were here tonight, though they are. Um, and they brought us up in a Christian home, thankfully, and brought us to church all the time. We loved church, so we went to Leslie Hill, we were there from I was born in Leslie Hill, but for Mum and Dad. Actually, you got together there and you took Dad along, so that's, that's where I grew up there um, until I was about 17. Um, and then we went to just various other churches um, um, until we got to, or, or to loads of points. We took us down to Dublin and the dark, I remember one time, okay. um, way down there, and had our lunch in the car park in the pouring rain and the snow, and then went to the nighttime service, and then in our jammies, mum and dad put us in our wee jammies and we were asleep at the time we got home, they just put it in our bed then. So we had brilliant wee journeys down the dock in Dublin and Zurg and then and buying them a few other places. But it was, it was, it was good fun. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. It's good to be brought up in a Christian home, really. Although you rebel against it, I suppose, a wee bit like too, but it's, uh, that's good. Tell us a wee bit about work and stuff and tell us about, tell us about how you met. That's, that's always that's always good yeah. good fun when it comes to that, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, how we met was actually through I worked with uh, Frederick down in the New York community doing an outreach and we had a children's ministry going on down there and one of the weeks we invited a team of people from Debbie's church to come and do a puppet show for the kids. And Debbie came along and um, wasn't really speaking to her, I was speaking to the friend that I knew from the church at the time. But then I was ignoring her. But we, we, we spoke briefly outside the hall and then we were saying about going to up to the Amway Hall up near Queen's University because the college, I went to Bible College and the Bible College was doing an outreach up there and they hired the Elmley Hall. And I always like to go along to give them support. <coughs> and so two of us were sitting beside each other and I just felt the Lord telling me, trying to tell me something. Just wasn't listening properly, but I just felt him trying to tell me something. So when I got home and I says, Lord, were you trying to tell me something the other night? And I just felt the Lord saying, that girl you were sitting beside is going to be your wife. There's on that night. Now, to get that understanding, I need to take you back to <laughs> how it started. Because when I became a Christian, I started going to Whitewell. And for five years, I became Whitewell. I was involved in the choir. And a lot of people in the area when I grew up in this area, I said, you just go there because of the girls. Because it became known as the church where you can get a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, well, that's part of the story, but it's because I'm saved and I'm a Christian, but yeah. that's just a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> but when God called me, and I thought God called me to go to Bible College, I then made a commitment that I am not having any more relationships because all I want to do is get close to God and get to know Him. Mm. And until he brings the right one along, the one who I will marry, I waited for over seven years. I stuck to that commitment and, and committed myself to God and the service of God. Yeah. And, but still believing in the meantime that God had someone like for me there. Yeah. And then when God showed me that I was going to be wife, I had to wait another seven months because I started a job down in Bangor. And I didn't drive at the time. I had my license, but didn't have the car. And there was one night when I started on the job, I was on the bus. And I was on the way down to the, the job, and Debbie steps over the bus, and I'm going, I couldn't be. And I'm, I'm having to look clear, do a double take. And I, I just, no, I'm not too sure. So on the way back home that night, she gets on the same bus again sits on the seat directly in front of me. 
And she's texting away on her phone, and I leave through the app. <laughs> and I says, if you send me that text, I'll not get it because you don't have the number. <laughs> <laughs> and then she turned around, she was all surprised. So from that point, we used, used to meet and talk for a good way um, about things. Um, then I was given a car, uh, as one of the members of the church says, I'm getting a new car, do you want my old one? Um, I said, must you want for it? Nothing here, it's yours. Uh, so I was able to then pick Debbie up. So one night, she comes out all dolled up, all the makeup on the hair tidy, wearing um, a navy blue flowery dress. Is um, all to, to try and impress me, you know. Um, <laughs> 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 and, uh, but the whole time I was talking to her, um, and the length of time I was talking to her, she'll tell you a bit where she was at that time herself. I don't want to let, I let her share that part. But there came a point then, and she doesn't know this here, I didn't share this with her, I started questioning, is she the one? Mm. Because it was taking so long for us to get together. <laughs> and I said, is she the one, Lord? Because I'm not getting the impression that she's interested here. So then I, she had this her stay. I've seen them. That, that <laughs> fully per her stay. I thought she was part of the Jackson Five. <laughs> and I said, Lord, if she's the one, you're going to have to get her to do something about that her. <laughs> and lo and behold, she did do something about her her. But where she was at the time, there was a, a process that she had to go through. And when she made a decision, do what you've got to say, she she'll explain that to you herself. Um, she said to me on the final, last night that we talked, but she says what you're going to do. She says, if you don't hear from me within two weeks, right, you can come and slap me and I says, I'll hold you to that. <laughs> says, but lo and behold, she called me within two weeks. And then after that, uh, <coughs> I was due to go away for a team building exercise to Blackpool for the day with work uh, for a team building exercise. I came back. With um, do you remember the old the, the, the Scottish hats with the the ginger white? You used to be late with that, yeah. the big bar trouble wearing that there with the house, and get, and, and a teddy bear and presented to it. And then a week later we started dating. And then on her birthday, that was about three months later, I proposed to her. Right. Right. And then over uh, about two years later, we got married. Right. I suppose when you seen the hat and the wig and all, you thought, I've got a nice brown with mom here. <laughs> Can't really say no. Then we filled out awesome with your, your side of, uh, of this, the story. What were you doing those two weeks? Or is it maybe off the camera? You know, we don't need to know. Yeah, right, so um, I'll go back a bit. Um, I worked as a care assistant for 21 years. And at the time, um, I was working in a wee home in Hollywood, in Hollywood Care Home. And um, if I said there is a backstory to that again, um, when I was about 18, 19, I just decided, uh, uh, you know what, I've heard so many stories of clubs and all, you know, people going out and having a good time, do you know what, I'm gonna go do that. So I went out into the world um, and parties and all, ended up living with a friend um, who unfortunately didn't live in a very clean house. Um, so I didn't really eat in her house all night. It was chippy, so the girl in work and all used to give me food. No, it was amazing. She was amazing, like, so she was very good um, lady. Um, and so I was like, I was just wayward. And, and then I met a fella and I was living with him. So when I met Barry, I was living. This is how good and gracious God is and amazing God is. And, and I guess we just went crying. Um, yeah, so I was living with him and I met Barry and I thought, oh my goodness. And I was talking to him, so whenever he left me, he left me off at the bus stop so I could get my, wait for me so I could get my bus. I literally sat on the bus, I'm not joking, there's nobody else on the bus, there's the driver and me. And I sat and I, I hit my head with me, why, why, why? I realised, God told me, that is your husband, mm. that is your husband, he has been waiting for you. And I just went, Lord, why? You have tried to tell me umpteen times. You've tried to tell me to end this relationship. 
And I just said, no, and I kept going back. I ended up, went back, ended up, went back, you know, for various reasons and lured back. And, and I was like, God, why haven't I just say no? And why didn't I just go back? And he might have probably blown it on you, probably wouldn't like me. You know, and I just thought, I'd blown it away. Well, obviously, you know, the bar, I just kept going and all the rest of it. And I took it the kids. I didn't get, get, get to bring up and head up a pocket and all that. Yeah, not know, but obviously Barry knew it was something I wasn't asking him. Oh, I, I, I noticed. Yeah, he I'm, I'm very observant. Yeah, so he, <laughs> he obviously noticed, and I was like, and then I was like, oh, Lord, you know what, I'm going to have to tell him. I'll have to tell him, and then he'll just say, no, well, that's it. So I did, I ended up telling him, and I said to Barry, I'm actually done something here for somebody, but I've been trying to end this relationship for years, and I haven't had the strength to do it. And I believe that God sent Barry along so he could help me. Mm. And because you can't do anything your own strength. And God, yes, Amen. God can help you too, but he can also help bring people along. And Barry just came in right at the, it was like my knight in shining armor, you know, and God brought him right at yeah. the right time. I've got to stop polishing the armor. <laughs> <laughs> but he came at the right time, and it was amazing. It was so good, yeah. Yeah, but what, 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 what you, you didn't hear there is in the process I was talking to Debbie and knowing that she was in a relationship, and she knew herself that she'd be, she should be in that relationship. Yeah. And I said to her, and I said, I'm going to ask you a number of questions. Right? And, and I, I want you to listen to your answers to, because a lot of people will try and tell you what to do. And they will tell you, you need to get out of that relationship. And because of that, what you do is you rebel against what people are telling you to do. Yep. So you have to find the answer for yourself. So I say to David, I'm going to ask you a number of questions. And I want you to listen to the answers that you get. And as I ask the question, one after the other, and I'm, I'm asking these questions at the same myself, like, I'm once meant, it's meant to be mine. Yeah. Who is? And, I, and she's probably one of Herself because of the questions I'm asking her, and I'm asking her, God has a plan for your life. Amen. Right? Now, when God has a plan for your life, and you're out of that plan, and something's holding you back from stepping into that plan, what do you need to do? She answered herself. And it continued on, like it says, Now, do you believe God has the proper person out there for you? No one's me, and I couldn't say it. I felt like screaming out, saying, it's me, it's me. But I couldn't. Um, and I said, do you believe someone, God has someone out there for you? And she said, yes. And I said, so what do you need to do? She asked herself. And I, at the end of all the questions, I said, right, did you listen to the answer of all those questions? And she said, yes. I said, did you notice one thing about the, the, your answer? She said, yes, the, the answer is the same. I says, so what's God telling you you need to do? Mm -hmm. And it was at that point, that's when she said, I know what I'm going to do. Um, and that's when she says, if you don't hear from me within two weeks, you can slap me. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But <clears throat> there was part of the story you, ne you never shared mm -hmm. about how you phoned your mum. Oh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell you about it after. See I am like the way that you forget. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, I was in, as I say, I worked in the wee, um, the wee, um, car home? Yeah, the car home. I forgot what it's called. <laughs> car home in Hollywood. And so, in the great time, I phoned my mum, because I'd made the decision that I was, was going to go back home. So I phoned my mum and I said, Mum, I'm coming home. And I rem if I remember, Mum, you we were like, you took down the curtains and washed the curtains and washed the bed and made it all special for me and it was like, you know, the prodigal son yeah. coming home, you know, Lovely. it was a daughter coming home Lovely. and my mum was like, just uh, that was just to go God's grace as well that I yeah. came home. Lovely. She texted me to say I want to, to meet me, to give you a thank you. Yeah. And she invited me back to the house and I switched phone to her mum and dad saying, what's up, are you coming back with me? <laughs> and they were, they were in their bed. <laughs> 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 but that night, it, it was... I was a mobile player. Yeah, it was on my I was like following snail in the corner. <laughs> so was. But when I got back to the house, we were sitting, we all, all sat in the kitchen at the time. You weren't, you weren't allowed in the living room when you were starting to date. That's, well, that's the impression I got because we sat there and just over in the kitchen. But while sitting in, in the kitchen, it was her sister grilling me. Her sister asked me every question. I said, well, hold on, man. 
Councillor Ray Dolan said it here. He <laughs> said, you've asked me every question about, apart from what colour wonder were we? <laughs> yes, and that's a good question, but after that it was just, things thing took off. Brilliant. Took off that. Yeah. Brilliant. So, you're together now. Uh, tell us me about how you, how you came to faith, and I'm going to tell you this, please. <clears throat> well, with me, the same, I was brought up in a Christian home. Yeah. I right? wasn't a Christian myself. Um, was brought up in, a, in well, Christian, using Christian beliefs. Yeah. Um, my mum wasn't a Christian. Uh, my granny was really a Christian in, in the family. And I'd say, and I do thank God for praying grandparents Amen. and gr praying parents. They are Christians. Um, and well, as brought up, I made go to Sunday school and knew the message about how God, Jesus died on the cross for our sins and I made numerous commitments even when I was going to Sunday school and through Sunday school uh, to God through those years. Um, went back, just start doing the things of the world again. Um, and it wasn't actually till um, my oldest brother who got saved, um, which who now is no longer walking with the Lord, but I believe I, I believe that he will come back one day. Mm -hmm. um, but he invited a friend up to the house one night from Whitewell. And they were sitting in, the, in my mum's living room, we were chatting away. And he started witnessing me, he says, listen, I can be barred with all that there. I know all that, he says, I've been brought up listening to it the most of my life. He says, I've no, no longer interest. I've made commitments time and time again, and people have let me down. Um, and he, he just said, and he says, Barry, t tell me this. And I was saying that like, I still read my Bible. Mm -hmm. I even answer the qu questions about the Bible to my friends. And mm -hmm. um, figured that was good. And for people who, who, if you're listening and you don't you know, go up but you go to church and you think you, that makes you a Christian, <coughs> let me tell you this going to church doesn't make you a Christian mm -hmm. as much mm -hmm. as going to McDonald's gets you a hamburger. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it's once you accept Christ as your personal saviour, that's, right, yeah. that's what makes you a Christian. And it's not a religion, it's a personal relationship yeah. with Jesus. Bless you, and it wasn't until that fella said to me about, Barry, that's great if you answer the questions, but tell me this, what happens, what would happen if your friends that you answer those questions to got saved? through you answering the questions, and you are not saved yourself. Mm. And it was the Holy Spirit used those words to work on me yes, and convict right. me. And it was about two, and I had my brother and one of his friends saying, you're becoming a Christian, trying to force me to become yeah. a Christian, which I says, no, I'm not. I will become a Christian, not because you want me to, but because I want to, mm -hmm. and I agree with God's mm -hmm. me, and, and uh, I will do it on my terms. Yeah. And it was on the 29th of October at 9 o'clock at night that the, the conviction of the Holy Spirit was that strong upon me that I just sat on the end of my bed and I asked Jesus into my heart. Praise, Praise the Lord. 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 Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Yeah. I was, as I say, I was brought up in a Christian home, so I always knew, you know, that you had to ask Jesus <coughs> into your heart. And I'm sure I, I don't even remember what I'm about about five or six or something. It's quite young anyway. Um, but all I remember is, I remember the church and the, the Hills used to show those movies about um, left, being left behind. Oh, my God. You know, yeah. all those. And do you know what? It actually really scared me as a child. I, was, I used to think, oh my goodness, I'm going to come home one day and, and everybody's going to be gone and I'm going to be left behind. And it really scared me and I thought about it. And I was like, I must have been upset or something. I remember a girl called Therese. I don't know how I remember her name. But I remember her talking to me um, and the ladies and Leslie Hills um, and I was like, oh, I'd love to be a Christian and she said, well, I'll pray for you now. I'll go home and tell your mum. I'm sure your mum will pray because I remember saying mum and she prayed with me as well. I don't even remember what age I was, but do you know, I always knew that, you know, about having Jesus in your heart and I always did love going to church. I loved church. 16, probably got to about 17 um, whenever we left Leslie Hills. And, and I just thought, you know what, I was kind of sitting on, for a long, long time, for years, and sat on the fence. I just thought, you know, one Sunday, like, yeah, yeah, I want to go to church. I really want to go to church. And, uh, and 
you know what, I'm, I'm going to put up me all in, into being a Christian, I'm going to give me all to Jesus, I'm going to give my heart, and I'm going to I'm going to stick with him, that's it, and I'm not going to give in to the devil, and then it would have been like, you friends are like, come on, like, okay then, I'm going to Saturday night, or whatever, you know, and then I'll stay left home, um, and, you know, party and then go to church for a good wee while, and then I'll say, came back home again, and I was back in the church again. It was kind of like a bit of a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. So it was my faith, really a roller coaster. It was like going to church and sticking with it. Then, you no, know, going out. Then sitting on the fence. So it was kind of back and forth for years, up to years it was. Then I joined um, one accord. So I did um, a group and I was always singing the choirs and everything. Was like Aris, like I always loved being in choirs and was in one accord for five years, but I joined this choir. Actually, my friend told me about it. She was talking about it and she was really praying that she'd have somebody join with her. She told me about it and I said, I'd love to go to her. She was really, I was praying about that and God answered my prayer. Amen, she said. So I went with her and as I was standing on the stage singing, I just thought, you know what? I can't, I, I can't. I just, I can't go out. So I can't one night and be on the stage and sing and praise, give praises to her. I think I can't do that. That's not right. It's not right. I have to give my all to all. It's either all or nothing. Mm. It's me. It's just have to give my all, and that's it. So I, I made up my mind. So then we went out with my friends, and we're all set. We all had a meal, so we did. And then we were like, why are you not ordering a drink? I said, I've just made a decision that I'm not going to drink anymore, and I'm not coming out with this anymore. And all that. So you know, then afterwards, I said, no, I'm going home. And they all left. One by one, they all left too. Not one of them stayed behind, they all left as well. Which was probably something that was meant to happen because I had a say, I don't know what would happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. God saved them from something, I don't know. But I just believe that was my testimony starting right there and then. It was just like God said, right, that's it. You have to be serious about that. And I said, yes, I am serious. And from that time on, I just give my all to God. And Brilliant. Amen. Amen. So Amen. 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 to follow Jesus. Yes. Yes. No turning back. Yes. No Amen. turning back. Praise the Lord. So guys, you're in a right now in the... I hope you're not, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got mine on, I don't know about it. <laughs> oh, just the wrong oh, no. figure. <laughs> no, you're, you're married, the, the boys have come along. But um, the ministry, Barry, I mean, there, we know that there's a, there's a call in there. I mean, you've been through the Bible college and other things, you know. Um, where do you feel uh, God's leading you? Or, or tell us a wee bit about how you believe that God was calling you into His work in whatever way and whatever arena. Well, as I said, I started when I went off to Bible College from Waverley, and I felt the call then. And I just I prayed to God when I was going off in the college. I said, Lord, I know that I can go up to God and learn everything and draw close to me. I said, what, what's your calling upon me? Mm -hmm. He said, well, because I can go and learn and have all the head knowledge about everything I'm being taught. He said, but I would like to know where I'm going to be put into use. Yeah. What's the calling that you have, have upon my life? And it was, when, when we were down, if you all remember, Hillsborough Bible Week, down there one night, and I think it was Rick, Goblin was speaking that that week. Right. And I remember speaking, he was speaking on about the, the ministry gifts. And it was just as he's speaking, it was just he started spe speaking scripture about summer called. And it's just as he came to the point where it says summer called to be pastors. Yes. That jumped out at me and I said, Well, Lord, I'm not speaking pastor because see it's good or even in Sunday school, when they were doing a play, he says, give me an on speaker's part. I didn't want to do anything. I wasn't comfortable speaking in front of people. <laughs> he, and I said, Lord, wow. Well, if that's what you want me to be, then you're going to have to really confirm this for me because it's not me. Yeah. Now, you wouldn't believe it to think I'd say that now when you see me now, but that's not who I am. I'm not comfortable getting up and speaking in front of people. So you have to confirm this for me, Lord. So when it was time to go off to the college, Praying about it, and a lot of people, friends, asked me, "Why are you going up to college? But what's what's your call?" And I said, "Well, I believe God's called me to be a pastor." And I said, "Well, I believe that also because you really got a heart for people." Because I was even even within my well, 
a, there was a time that Norman always used to say in the youth, when new conquerors come in, we need to be there to support them. Yeah. And encourage them to, to, to continually walk on with God. And, and I prayed about it. I said, Lord, I want to do something there. So the Lord said, well, start up a wee uh, after church house group. And I approached Norman and suggested it to Norman and got my, the blessing. And just invited young converts back to the house for a cup of tea and a chat. For people of their own age to be able to get encouraged and built mm -hmm. up in their faith so they continue to yep. walk on. And even to this day, I've, I've heard that there is people who came along to that who are actually still walking on with the Lord. Because Praise God. Says Praise they, think, they think that I was obedient to God. But I didn't realize that was God preparing me yeah. for the calling that he had upon my life. Yeah. And I just said, no, this is what I want to do. I want to be obedient to God and, do, and try and encourage people. And that's when my friend said, well, I believe because that's what God has because of the way you reach out to people and you're there for people, you care about them. It doesn't do, you don't care what age they are, you don't, you just be that you're there for people. Yeah. Says, um, and I believe that to you. But then there was a time I was speaking to a, a, a friend that I went to school with, we grew up and went to school together and we walked with here and every time people seen us walking down the school corridors, it's, it's, it's always said, oh, here's the Moses squad. <laughs> says, because the two of us were always witnessing, and we run the scripture union even in the school as well. Yeah. And and he said to me, "Is a friend called you know, most of you probably know him, Johnny Brown." Mm -hmm. He said to me, "But how do you know God's called you to be a pastor? Because they're, they're just confirming what you have told them, and that put a wee bit of doubt in my mind. And I was like, Lord, have you called me?" Yeah. Have you really called me? He says, Lord, I'm willing to pursue the call and be a place on my life. But you're going to have to give me a confirmation that blows all doubt out of the matter. Yeah. And I prayed that and prayed that. So it was, I was afraid down to um, a barbecue down in Hillsborough with a couple of friends. They were doing a car treasure hunt beforehand, and afterwards it was followed by a barbecue. And everybody was afraid along uh, was there. And there was this fellow standing. All that he was standing by himself and didn't know him at all. And I didn't want the feeling he was like by himself, so I, I approached to, to start talking to him. And as I'm approaching him, um, his first words out of the mouth to start the conversation, you've got the heart to be a pastor. He that's how he started the conversation with yeah. me. And, and I'm like, I'm looking at my friends and I'm saying to them, Have any of you spoken to him? And they were saying, no, you're the first one to actually speak to him about all of us. Mm. And I he looked up and I said, well, what about is the confirmation? I don't know what is. Uh, but now, over time, things did get waylaid and I just went a different path. Yeah. And it wasn't it wasn't until we were sitting down when we went to Bangor Island, because we used to go to, when we got married, we went to a church called Liberty. Christian Fellowship of an independent church. And yeah. um, when that the, the doors of that church closed, we prayed God where do you want us to go and go back God was leading us down to Bangor Elam. So we were there because we lived over in Polycarnet for ten years before marriage. Before we moved up here. It took me years to get Daddy back to move up here. Because <laughs> that's a totally different story how why she wouldn't move up here. But um, we were sitting in Bangor Elam, and I was just worshipping God, and I just heard God saying, Why, what are you doing? And I says, well, What do you mean, what am I doing? He says, What are you doing? Mm. He says, You're not pursuing the call I have put upon your life. Because I was comfortable just sitting in the church worshipping God, and yeah. not doing anything, even though I was involved teaching in the Sunday school and being a youth leader down there as well. But I wasn't pursuing the call, God was telling me in that there, and I said, right, Lord, what do you need me to do to get to the back track? He says, I will make a way. Yeah. And so then it was at the, the Bible week in Jordan's time that, that Hugh announced about the academy, but he also said about the school ministry yeah. that they were doing, uh, because the academy didn't really appeal to me. Yeah. Uh, but the school ministry, because of what involved in the school ministry, was that you were placed 
That's in, right. In a, in a church, they get the experience of working as a leader and how a church run. And you got that experience. And so I done that for two years and brought different. I remember the first time I applied, I, I went to Hugh and I said, Well, Hugh, that school master really applies to me. He says, But the problem is, because of my job role at the moment, it's whether I can get the time off. Because uh, the school ministry required you to have at least two days, or two full days a month. That's right. Free to be able to go in, 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 the, in the class. That's right. Um, on it, and my job role, because I was in and out of meetings all the time, um, I didn't think it was. So I approached my mom, mom and said no. But I said to you, and I said, he said, well, boy, what you do is you just um, do the academy for the first year. Yeah. And then you can look at doing the school ministry the following year. Mm -hmm. And so I put in the forms for the academy, um, because he said, I mean, you have to make, if you want to get back on track, you have to make the first step. Yeah. And he says, the best way to make that first step is by doing the academy. Uh, so I made, I applied, never heard anything back. I came back the following year, he says, yeah, I applied for the, the academy. And he says to me, I know you did, but never heard anything back. He said, no, you're just meant to turn up. <laughs> he says, I didn't know that. He <laughs> says, I didn't know that. I says, well, I know that. That's okay. I'll come this year. And I was actually, the job role then changed. And I was able to um, do the school ministry. And how that came about was that for the two days I was required for each month, um, I approached my management and I said, listen, I, re I remember I spoke to you last year about this course monitor. He said, because I've always been open about my faith yeah. to my work colleagues and my management from then on I started in the job. And they, they know where I stand. And I told him I really want to do this, but mm -hmm. it requires me to have two days yeah. um, a month, two full days a month, so I can do it. Um, I said, but what I'm prepared to do, so I can do it, I'm willing to sacrifice my annual leave and use my annual leave. So that, that meant, because Debbie and myself, we always used to go away. I took two weeks off in July. The week for the Bible week and then the week for go to Donny Golf. We always went. Yeah. Um, and I said I'm not going to sacrifice that to be able to follow uh, yes, the path yeah. and um, as an extra response was me, which and I and, and I know God was totally in this. He says, Boy, I don't want you to do that. He says, What do you mean? He says the only way going to be able to do it. He says, No. He says, I'll tell you what. You come in an hour earlier and finish an hour later. Right? Those for that for that month yeah. to build up those hours for those two days. Yeah, yeah. Um, says I'm happy enough for you to do that there, right. and that means then you're not having to sacrifice your right. annual leave. Mm -hmm. And I says, oh, can I do that? He says, yeah. He says, what's well, so we have no problem about that. Just as long as we have it on record, that's fine. Um, so I started the process and went done the school school ministry. Then from there, um, we were placed in Newton Abbey Island. The group of us, mm -hmm. which we, um, which we, we built up the church again. Um, we were there for a while, and uh, I, I did go for eventually apply for the MIT through Malvern. Unfortunately, I was unsuccessful in the interview, mm -hmm. but I'm not giving up for going no. to call me today, mm -hmm. because I do believe whether it's within Elam or outside Elam, if, if, if God calls you, it will happen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because it's not a call that's appointed by man, it's a, a call that's appointed by God. Amen. 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 That's true. Um, and that's what I believe, and that's how I know God has just shown me the direction and always opened doors for me to be able to pursue yeah. that calling. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And even while you were there, Barry, I mean, you served as a as a deacon there. Yeah. And uh, now the two years are here. Yep. Yeah. You know, and we know how that came about, which is, which is wonderful as well, too. You know, um, to a final question to you, because he's have given us a we know them now, don't we? I <laughs> don't really have your pin number, brother. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, were, you were worried about not getting, yeah. a, not getting a word in. I know. <laughs> I know. But the thing is, if you have a pin number, you're not getting anything out. <laughs> <laughs> you're here with us now, guys, and we thank God for you. And we thank God for the work that you're doing here, and you have uh, completely transformed our youth work that we have here on a Friday night 
the difference that you guys have made is unbelievable. And I believe that the best is, is yet to come. But for yourselves, you know, uh, and my final question is, you know, you're, is there here, is there serving, you know, but um, where do you feel God maybe can have you in the next five, ten years or, or whatever? Where do you, I know there's still, I know there's that call, I know there's a, there's a, a burden, I know there's a, a desire, you know, but um, what would... What would, what would be your goal, as it were, you know, within 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 ministry? What would you like to do? What would you? I like to go away. Billy, no, I give you a chance to speak now. <laughs> so there is a bit of a backstory at the end of that. So we were in what time were we in? Was it Moville? Moville. So we were to be town in Donegal and Moville, and up we were just taking that old romantic stroll. So we were, and um, I just just turned around and I went, "Do you see that? I mean, I don't know." I can't explain the feeling. Before I said yes, I feel that too. It was like a moment where we fell in love with Donegal, and I don't mean fall in love with somebody. You know, like you so you go somewhere every year and you say, "Oh, I love that place," or "I love the man." Mm -hmm. It wasn't that. It was like a God given moment where it just hits you in your soul, and you go, "This is where we're meant to be." I don't know when, I don't know where, but I know God has placed a desire for Donegal in our hearts, mm -hmm. and we we just talked about it for a long time when we said, you know what, we would love to plant eventually, I don't know when that will be, it'll be years down the, line, down the line but we would love if God lets us to plant the church in Donegal and I don't know whereabouts in Donegal now we've all, we've come to love Dunfanachy and there is a hotel there that has been lying dormant for years and every time we go down there we see that hotel and we go Lord, if it's meant to be because I can see, I can see everything and I can see do you know, I can see a vision of everything, of where everything's going to be. And I said, Lord, if that's meant to be, you keep that there. But I don't know where where it's going to, where we're going to end it, up. It, with us, uh, when we had the problem is, see, we, we went, it was actually for one of our anniversaries, where we went to Donegal and just <coughs> get a mobile for a weekend. And we went, that's when we went to walk. And I just felt this tugging upon my heart, and mm. I felt, Yes, and I, I did say to them, I said, did you get that as well? And she said, yes. Um, and we've been praying about it, and we, we just feel a strong pull towards Donegal. Yeah. We, we love going to Annaskillen as well. Yeah. But the, 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 the love that we have for Annaskillen and the love that we have for Donegal, it's completely different. Yeah. Really, because we, we always joked about Annaskillen. See, when we retire, we retire to Annaskillen. <laughs> yeah. And, and we always joke because we just love it. The mm. peace and the, the quietness is down there, but you would get that in Donegal as well, depending on mm -hmm. where you live. Like, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, we just felt a strong comment on it, and we prayed about it. And even through the Bible week, it was Malcolm Duff was speaking about it, and but he said, "Do you feel it? Does anybody here feel drawn to Donegal?" Mm. And we were like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah." Like mm. so was, um, and do you remember the time where he had the map? We had they had um, one time a map. And they said, um, wherever you're called, you're feeling you're called to, you get up right now and get a pen and pull out. So I didn't even say to him, come on, we'll what? And we both got up and got that pen and stuck it in Bonnie Gall. It, it was amazing. Every time yeah. we went to Wanderers, it was just like they were calling Donny Gall. Every time they called Donny Gall out, our hearts just, you know, it was yeah. just like it's mm. calling. And, and we did look into it because there's no real Pentecostal, uh, well, there's independent mm. ones. Yeah. Right, which in some parts of Donegal. <coughs> but there's no Elam. Yeah, that's right. Pentecostal in Donegal. That's uh, right. And where I'm praying, Lord, is that what you want us to do is establish a Elam Pentecostal in Donegal? Mm -hmm. And where where in Donegal do you want us to do that? Yeah. So we we're, we're we're at the stage where we're just following <coughs> what God wants us to do for now. Yes. And that because it has to be in his time and not our time. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. If we were, if it was us, we'd be away like it. Yeah. Like so mm -hmm. and it, 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 it could be the biggest mistake we make. So we have to make sure it's in God's timing Amen. and make sure God's behind it. Because when God, we know God's behind the, the moves that we make, there's blessing there. Yeah. And we know that there. So we're just waiting for God. And if God was to tell us tomorrow, right, it's time to go, yeah. we would be away. Yeah. But we're waiting for God's direction. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you for your, your 
You're so candid this evening. Let's give them a warm, warm. Trust and pray that the Lord does open the doors for you. I believe He will uh, in, in the future. I often wanted to plant a church in Barbados. No, I know, I know, I know exactly what you mean when you talk about an area. God puts an area upon your heart, and I believe that God has heard from us. I can speak for myself. I believe God has put a, a North Belfast, which is my home. I don't live here, like, but it's my home, all the same. And I would love, it personally, um, I would love to see, because all of North Belfast. I mean, we're driving up through. I mean, we we we, Roth Cools, part of North Belfast, the Antrim Road, Ardoin, Laganil, Woodville, Bollingham, Martin, Glencare. Here, you know what I would love to see here is I would love this to be like, I hate calling it the mother church because we're well, that raises all our connotations itself. But this would be the mother hub and have little hubs in all the parts of North Belfast. You know, just I think that'll be truly, truly incredible. You know, but God will make a way. And God will make yeah. a way for you guys as well too. Yeah. You know, praise the Lord. Let's yeah. pray together, folks, and then we'll have a ten fellowship as well too. We bless you, Lord. We give you thanks, oh God, for for lives touched by your hand. And Lord, we thank you for Debbie and for Barry here this evening. And Lord, we thank you that you've brought them here for such a time as this. And not only that, Lord, but you've brought them to the kingdom for such a time as this too. Lord, you know their heart. You know their desire. And Father, I pray that you would you would give them their heart's desire, that Lord, you would open a way, make a way for them to that they may be able to, to, to serve you. But thank you, Lord, that they're serving you here. But Lord, I pray that when the time is right, Lord, that they would know without a shadow of a doubt, and that Lord, that nothing would be able to hold them back. And Lord, when they do set foot in, in Donegal, that Lord, there will be a wonderful revival breakout, and many, many, many souls come to know you as their own and their personal saviour. But Lord, in the in-between time, I pray, Lord, that we would be here as an encouragement to them, as they're an encouragement to us, and that, Lord, that we would draw alongside them and help them in their walk, as they, in too, uh, encourage us in our walk here as well, too. Bless the youth which they are, are yes, heading Lord. up at the moment as well, too. Lord, give them souls for their hire as well, too. Bless Barry as he, as he shares the word faithfully every Friday evening. And Lord, we know that the gospel message is being sounded every night when he gets a, a, the opportunity to stand behind the little lectern there. Lord, for Debbie as well, too. And they're one to ones that she has with the kids that are coming in through the door. Pray, Lord, for all the little seeds that are being planted, that, Lord, that they would grow and they would bear much fruit. For their two boys as well, too. Raise them up as trophies yes, of grace, yes, Lord. Lord. You raise them up as men of faith. Because, Lord, the old enemy would like to get into them, even now as, as young men. But I pray a hedge of protection round about them. And, Lord, cover them in the blood this evening, where the devil can do them no harm. And, Lord, I just pray the same for the rest of our families, for each of us that are sitting here. We cover them by the blood. We cover them by your hand, O oh God. And, Father, we pray that even for our wayward boys and girls this evening, that, Lord, that they would come to know you, whom to know is life eternal. So, Father, I thank you for another Lord's Day here at Bali Salinum. Lord, we would carefully give you all of the praise and all of the glory. But our prayer and our desire more than anything else is that you've been pleased, O oh God, with everything that's been said and sung. And Lord, I pray that the Saviour has been lifted up and glorified in our lives, Lord, and in our hearts, and Lord, in this house. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise hey, the bless you. Lord. Hey, bless you. Hey, bless you.